Welcome back to the Tiger Hangout. This is Mike. I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for May 29th, 2022, 2022. We've got, of course, some Transformers news, Masterpiece, Legends, and Mainline. We have a really awesome update from Ramen Toy with all of their projects. They're looking great and some really cool, interesting directions they're going with their mask line. We had some surprise stuff going on this week with Masters of the Universe. We're going to talk about that. NECA's got some very interesting items coming out for an SDCC exclusive. I still don't know how to get them, but I am going to talk about them. And this might be one of the bigger weeks of news. Actually, this week of news is bigger than May 4th when it comes to Star Wars. We're going to talk about all this and more coming up. First up, what's new at Show Z? And pretty cool stuff going on there is the McFans Toys, the MS05C Tiger Paws. This is the McFans Toys version of Sideswipe, but of course recolored and all that kind of stuff. Now, I do have the Red Alert and the Sideswipe, and they're pretty decent. I actually like them better than Magic Square, so it's a pretty good figure for $29.99. They also got a 10% off sale on the MP44 KO. This is the one with the flat chest, or sorry, flat back. <laughs> so, this is the one that has a modified back, so it's good for some people that want to get rid of that voice box. I kind of like the voice box, but still, 90 bucks not a bad deal. They've also got Fans Toys Hoist and Trailbreaker up for pre-order, but still, no price just yet. But speaking of Outrider, Outrider is due out soon. There's a video from Fans Toys showcasing that it's going to come out soon. So this is on the... Fans Toys YouTube channel, so go check it out if you want to, but uh, pretty interesting. They're making a video to kind of say, hey, this is coming, it's on the way, and you get to kind of see what it looks like. So what does it look like rolling around town and all that kind of stuff, and then here it is, just in its alt mode. Here it is in the grass, and here's the bot mode, so... Pretty good looking figure overall, and just be interesting to see exactly how it turns out in hand and all that. Uh, funny that they're doing these promo videos. They didn't used to do stuff like this, so it makes you wonder why are they making these videos. But still, kind of cool, kind of interesting. Should be coming soon. I don't know what soon is. Two weeks? Is that, does that mean it's coming in two weeks? Uh, who knows? But anyway, look for Fans Toys Outrider coming soon to whatever, wherever you pre-orders. Show Z is where I pre-ordered mine, so I don't get it there. So there's more pictures of the Mastermind Creations, the R42 Z Def Continuum, and this is their Deathsaurus. Looks good, a uh, little shorter than X Transbots one, but still looks great. I just that's pretty awesome. It looks like that, and there's a close-up on his face also, so they kind of want to show the detail they put into it. it. Looks like it's a bit worn on the paint though, so uh, but still it looks really cool, looks really good. So I gotta say, two years ago I didn't even know what Deathsaurus was, so now. I think it's pretty cool and pretty excited for it. Well, the X-Transbots version. But this is the MMC version and it still looks good. Remember that newcomer, that new company, Metagate? And there's an update to their first project, the G01, and uh, just pictures of the alt mode, so... That's what it looks like in the alt modes with painted... I, saw, I think we saw gray prototype pictures last time or something along those lines, but this is what it looks like now with some color to it so kind of looks pretty cool looks pretty interesting the way they are the i hear a lot of people not liking the helicopter mode but uh it's nice that they made it a triple changer i guess now, i don't know if i've shown this picture yet because i don't remember seeing it but here is the iron man superhero pose with the like toys metroplex showing the posability and from what i've seen it's going to be quite posable and it's going to be very impressive for what it is i'm still curious about price and where to order and how to order and all that kind of stuff. So as soon as I find out about that, I'll be passing that along too, but looks really good. So I'm not really sure where to classify this because I don't know the size or scale or availability or if this thing's really going to see light of day or not, but this is pretty interesting here. It's the uh, Niger Wan Zhu and it's the DNO one Tine Tao, Teen Tao. I don't know. Anyway, but this is a MicroMaster Skyhopper made in the third party for whichever scale it's going to be, and it does look pretty cool. It looks like an improvement off of the original or of the original. Um, almost just looking at the perspective of this, it almost looks like it might be a chug scale. So, again, I don't know just yet. We'll find out more in the future, I'm sure. But it does look pretty small, so it's probably not Masterpiece. But, again, I don't know, so I'm sliding into the Masterpiece 
because it is third party and all that kind of stuff. But still pretty interesting, and I'm just curious how far any of these third party companies are going to go with the MicroMasters. Speaking of that, there is this uh, SNK Metal Slug 2 version of a figure, and it turns into a tank, but there's updated pictures of the actual bot mode, and here it is. So Metal Slug 2 project is still going on. If you've pre-ordered it, then expect it to show up. And I didn't see a picture of the tank updated, so anyway, it's still a pretty cool tank. I think the tank is the best mode out of the two. Here is an older picture of the tank mode. Uh, I think it's actually still just digital render, so still looks really cool. A really interesting tank mode. So we got some pictures of the 30M DLX, like the mini deluxe line of the Optimus Prime. The weird thing is, is every time I see 30, I think big, and this is not big, and it's not even masterpiece scale again, but it has that nice finish to it. But it's small, and well, exactly how small is this guy? He's barely bigger than a G1 Optimus Prime, which is way smaller than I thought he'd be. I thought he'd be like right at masterpiece scale, and he's way smaller now. I guess the uh, guess he's ringing in at right around seven inches. So uh, maybe he'd work with your chug line, chug scale, if that's something you want. So it says that we've got updated pictures of the Kotobukiya uh, Bishouju uh, Series Transformer Megatron and Prime Grayscale. But I think these are the same old pictures we've already seen. Actually, I think the last time we saw even more pictures. But anyway, uh, this is a thing. This is a statue coming from uh, uh, Kotobukiya. And then here we go next to the Optimus Prime. The Optimus Prime actually had color on it last time we saw the pictures, so I think this is a bit of a step backwards, but I guess it's just one of those things. Let's remind everybody that this is a thing, and it's coming. So it's kind of a drought of MP news this week. I mean, it's a nice video from Fans Toys and all that kind of stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about this upgrade kit. So there is an upgrade kit out there. It's ROS022 add-on kit, and I don't know much about it yet. This is like the first we're seeing of it, and not really sure if it's going to make it out to full production, but would be interesting, but it brings up a bigger question, and do you think this guy needs to be that much bigger? Now, I, I think the enlarged photo on the right is an actual enlarged photo, so it's not going to be that much bigger. It's uh, one of those kind of the comparisons that aren't really in scale. But anyway, before and after, and you kind of see the before and after, uh, again, the same stuff before and after. So it's interesting that you got some more add-ons, cleans them up just a little bit, adds a little bit more depth to the character of the figure, but do we need him bigger? Because then he's bigger, he's the biggest of all of them. Should he be the biggest of all of them? So that's kind of a question out there. And at this point, are people just more concerned about stuff like what's going on with light toys? And the possibility of the fans toys one in like five years. And since this guy's going to be pretty big, like bigger than Masterpiece, there's updated pictures to the Lego Optimus Prime that's out there. And it's transformable and all that kind of stuff. So let's see what else is going on here. This is what it looks like, I guess, in parts that... You assemble these parts and then plug them together. That's what I think. I think that's kind of how it goes. Like you build all these pieces, then you plug these pieces together, then you can transform them and do all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty interesting to see how the sausage is made, or the Optimus Prime is made in the Lego world. This is the opening chest so that you can see the Matrix, and I guess you have to build your own Matrix too. So bring your own Matrix. Build your own Matrix. Here is from the bag. He does have the bump out like we see with pretty much most Primes, and it's become synonymous with primes uh we've got new age and like last week we talked about the grimlock that they're going to put out and i said i want the toy version i said please give me the toy version i'll wait for it or actually i think i said something along the lines they're going to make 15 different versions and one will be a toy well that's the very next one it looks like the toy version to me and it's the ex version i believe uh still no ordering information it's not up for pre-order on any of the sites yet not on show z but this is the one i want i'm going to be going after this one i'll pre-order as soon as it pops up and this is what the first one looked like, which is very, very cartoon accurate. But for, for whatever reason, I like the toy versions of the Dinobots the most. So, and, and they're going to deliver. And they're going to deliver a whole slew of other color ranges. I bet you they're going to do G2s. They also came out saying they're going to have a cover that you could put over the inside of the legs because it was kind of not very clean. So now they're going to have this. So I don't know exactly how the cover is going to work and all that kind of stuff. But it's pretty interesting that they brought that up. I think we've seen this before, but we have updated pictures of Amy or the RC from Dr. Wu. It's got to be Legends scale, so this will fit with your Legends figures, and it does look really good. It's up for pre-order right now on Shows the Also. I went ahead and got mine pre-ordered because I am looking forward to this. It looks pretty good. I'm kind of curious at that small scale how well this is going to work, how well it's going to transform, and all that kind of stuff. But they're also putting out another version. Of course, it's going to be like a Nightbird. So. She also has posability, so if you want to like pose her 
really well to kind of just be relaxing, waiting to snipe somebody, or if you want to have her posing, I don't know, just chilling or whatever. So quite an opposability about this figure here, and she looks pretty good so far from what I've seen. What if Dr. Wu makes a Legends RC that's the best RC we've seen so far? Wouldn't that be crazy? But so far she does look pretty good. Looks very promising. The only other thing is the Nightbird with the repaint. And it's smart to do the repaint. And all these new accessories is pretty cool. And it's a very interesting looking bot. And look forward to seeing how this turns out. Rising Force has color pictures of their RFL01 Catfish. So... This is a pretty cool, this is a Legends scale combiner for Minasaur. It's late to the game and a lot of people are already happy with their Magic Square, but uh, I'm not really sure about the price yet. Maybe I should go double check, shows the price might be up there, but it's it looks pretty good. I mean, once you got the paint on it and all of that, this is a nice looking figure and especially for the Legends scale. Maybe they did make the right decision going to Legends. We got pictures of in-hand images of the New Age clear yellow Ultra Magnus, well, it's clear on the outside and uh, not clear in the middle, but anyway. Here is compared to a clear Optimus Prime, so they can do the Optimus Prime mold clear, but they choose not to. <laughs> and here's the Optimus Prime mold that's the part of it, and it's not clear. So I actually was okay with it, but a lot of people said that this should have been clear also. So I kind of understand that. I really do understand what they're saying about that this should have been clear but I kind of like that it's not, but it, I don't know, it's strange. What really it throws it off in the alt mode, because when you look at the alt mode, you say, well, the cab is solid and the rear is clear. It doesn't really make sense, but it still looks good though. Okay, so we've got some mainline news here. The good old chef's cooking up some stuff over here. So we get an early in-hand look of Le Legacy Alita 1, and that's right in the very center. On the left is the one that was at the Walmart, and on the right is the RC we've already gotten. So looking at all this, does look pretty good overall. It's one of those that they're not allowed to use the mold on the left, so it looks vastly different. I, I kind of like it a little bit more because it's not so over, overly done with the backpack. Now looking at the alt mode, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the alt mode looks different than I would expect. I, I think I'm okay with it, but uh, the other alt mode's closer to kind of like an RC knockoff in a way but I just don't think the alt mode for RC was all that great. So this might even be an improvement. You actually see the wheels there. Chef also gave us a picture or some pictures or a video of the Legacy Knockout. And there it is. And I think that's right next to, is that the Prime version? Is that where it came from? The original is on the left and then the new Legacy one's on the right. So uh, pretty interesting looking. I actually think the one on the right looks a little bit cooler. And there it is in alt mode next to a Jazz. So... Yeah, looks pretty good. Looks pretty cool overall. Now, we're also getting uh, the Wild Rider. So here's a picture of Wild Rider and looks good. Now, we saw the Wild Rider for Legends. That was uh, Rising Force Legends. And so quite a bit of a difference between that and what's going on here. I actually think this set looks pretty good so far. So for what I've seen, it looks great. This alt mode is pretty much spot on. So I like that and that works and you can... Now, the only thing that really takes away from these, the fact they put those 5mm ports in, it's a little bit of a takeaway, but you got to have the playability in it, so it's definitely worth having it. Speaking of playability, combined mode leg looks great. That's what it looks like right there. It works. So we got some pictures of a clamp down, or it's a side swipe repaint there, and uh, it's a pretty cool looking figure. It looks, looks like it's based off the Earthrise mold the most, and not Siege, so looking pretty decent. Here it is in alt mode, and so the new one is on the right. They kind of switch it up on us there, but still looks pretty good. I, I think actually both these alt modes look pretty good. Here's Legacy Clampdown with Sideswipe and Red Alert, and that's what the team looks like. Obviously using the same mold, sharing the same mold, looking pretty good. So we're starting to see the junk heap from the Studio Series Junkion showing up at retail, which is pretty exciting, and I'm looking forward to catching a couple of these. But the thing is that I wonder if they're going to make more. And I really think Rekar is pretty popular. I'm pretty sure this guy is going to be popular. So I'm curious if this is, is going to be two and done or if they're going to keep it going. Which it seems like it's like a no-brainer. Just keep cranking them out because A, people are going to keep buying them. And B, it would be really cool for them to just keep reusing the mold. Slight differences, but yet have such an interesting looking uh, picture or display on your shelf. Also showing up at US retail right now is the... Dinobot Sludge. So I kind of look forward to this guy. I want to dial out that team. And again, just like I'm saying with the other stuff, 
they should finish this team. I really hope we get the sloop and all that kind of stuff. So really look forward to it. I'm actually hearing some rumors they're going to make the rest of them in Voyager. That would be a big mistake. They need to all be uh, they need to all be leader class. So before we get into other non-transformer related news, I do want to continue the "What do you get for ten dollars?" segment. What do we get for ten dollars? Starting out at Target with these reaction Super Seven figures. Now, these guys right here were all under ten dollars, and I think Destro was like six. So uh, if you want to go log on right now and find some of these, if you're interested, if you think eighteen's too much, but six or eight or nine is okay then then this is your chance to grab a few of these also all of these were ten dollars except i think the he-man was 10.99 so what do you get for ten dollars it's it's a pretty good deal so picking up a few things and uh with this new movie coming out for jurassic park jurassic world uh, it'd be kind of fun to have some of the jurassic world figures so getting into the ramen toy so they're New name for masks is be Machina, like Ex Machina, Machina. And there was like a whole definition and all this kind of stuff on their live stream and defining it and stuff. But this is Gloria Baker and it's an amazing looking figure. And first of all, this is a figure with the short hair and a mask. Then you have the long haired one, so you could just have her looking like she does in the show with her long hair and all that kind of stuff. And you swap the heads and you also could swap to a mask. So that's kind of the whole gimmick, and I was guessing it last week, but this is actually saying on the left is just you swap the head with this, and you can have the mask look, look like the show. Or you could go over here, and you can have the mask look like, like a retro helmet, and that's pretty cool the way they did that. And then this kind of shows you what her short-haired head looks like inside the retro helmet mask, so... Pretty cool, it's interesting, and this is the kind of stuff that they're doing that's a little bit different than I see other companies do. We got a quick little update of a Centurions, and this is going to be a weapon system, the sneak peek of a weapon system that they're working on that's going to work with Ace McCloud. It's one of his unreleased weapon systems, and the reason they're doing this one is because of the fact that Ace McCloud only had three weapon systems, and the other ones had four or five, so filling your shelf with yet the fourth weapon system that we never got will be a lot of fun for vintage collectors and it will fit your vintage figure. So crossing from Centurions into Silverhawks, this is two different versions of their hacker figure and you have two different color options, one on the left and one on the right. I prefer the one on the right, but I don't know. I, I, I might get one of each, I'm not sure yet, but uh, it does look good. I just think it looks really good, especially the painted models just look amazing. So uh, also with the Monstar there, that thing is huge and it's painted very well. It looks amazing. That thing is going to look outstanding on the shelf. Here we go with their Quicksilver and the Quicksilver does look pretty good too. Uh, really kind of impressed with the paint scheme. I'm wondering if they could use a different color plastic for the joints like the elbows and all that kind of stuff. Or, or is it true that the gold and silver plastic will over time break down so i'm curious about that i want to ask the questions why are we using that color to have such a breakup but aside from that everything on this looks just looks amazing it just looks outstanding so i got a little bit of masters of the universe the he-man news here and so i was on the phone with my rep from bbts because i had a few issues with my super 7 thundercats ultimates and i asked him what's up with taking this off the site why did they take this he-man down and he told me that they don't know the exact reason why but they were told that re they will re-put this back up for pre-orders start taking pre-orders again sometime in august so uh if you missed out on this you didn't really miss out on this it's not like the missing out on Koldar. now uh i first saw this and i thought i don't really know if i want this or not but i'll, I'll get a couple and then uh, I was going to get my two, and then I asked my son if he wanted one, so I threw another one on there. Then I proceeded to the checkout process, and everything looked normal. And then I went back like 10 minutes later, and they were all sold out, and mine were still in my cart. And I was like, I don't understand. How are they still in my cart? How did that not go through? So I called them up, actually, at Mattel Creations, and Mattel Creations said, it was a glitch. So, sorry. Too bad. Nothing we can do for you. Well, we're not going to offer you anything. Don't worry about it. Uh, you're just never going to have this. You'll die without this. It's like, oh, all right, all right that sounds good. Well, basically, I asked them, will I just die and never have one of these? But it's not that big of a deal to me. I don't really know who he is that much. Here he was in one episode. So we've got some NECA Comic-Con exclusives, which look really cool. This Dungeons & Dragons. Now, I don't have a whole lot of Dungeons & Dragons, but I have a few. And I have enough to know that it's really annoying getting these weapons and accessories and getting 
these figures complete. So to be able to buy these is pretty cool. Now these look different than the LJN toys, and I bet you they have way more articulation, all that kind of stuff. But just seeing the cool packaging, you almost don't want to open them either. So you may never see the articulation and all that kind of stuff. But it's pretty cool. It's a hundred dollars for the set. And here's what they look like if you uh, desecrate the package. You can take them out, and they look pretty good. And uh, I think they look great but i think ljn did a pretty good job in the past so i don't know if this is going to be like a one-off or if they're going to dial out all what 29 figures or or 18 i really don't know exactly how many figures there are but i'm curious like why would you do just these four and not the rest or more or go forward it doesn't really make sense i would think they would do them all and still no no uh, information on where to order the dungeon dragon sets but here we are with their this is the TMNT, and it's kind of the pre-transformation, the pre-ooze, and it's pretty cool. So you get Rocksteady, you get Bebop, and then you get uh, Splinter and Baxter before they get the transformation. So it's interesting, and this is actually, yeah, this is what an exclusive should be. Not everybody's going to chase this down, so that works, but I still think it's cool. It's an extra interesting novelty they're running out of ideas of figures they can make that will sell enough to meet the minimum order quantity for for actually doing a production run here it is in the box and it's pretty interesting packaging this is something that they've been doing a lot lately with this fold down uh flap so interesting cool looks good definitely fits within the world Okay, so we got some Star Wars news quite a bit this week, but uh, first of all, if you're interested in this retro collection Star Wars uh, six-pack, it's $70. You can get it on Hasbro Pulse and Shop Disney, uh, so those are the two places I know you can order them. I don't think you can get them anywhere else just yet, but maybe they'll be at other places. I don't know if they will or not, but anyway, uh, that's where you could get it right now if you missed out on the first run. All right, so some Black Series news this week. We've got the Ala Secura figure, and this is in the packaging in the box, and so it's pretty cool. It's a Twi'lek, Twi'lek, however you say it, and there she is out of the package. And a good-looking figure, definitely something that would be a lot of fun with maybe uh, next to an Ahsoka and some of these other ones, so looks pretty cool. Uh, this is the Grief Karga, a Season 2, whatever. Here's the thing. I think that the packaging on the ones hanging at Walmart have already changed color into this color and the figure itself started getting some gray goatee on the shelves from age. <laughs> so maybe they already look like this, but uh, this was a waste. They should not have put this out because the original one didn't sell. This is not going to sell. It's just going to sit at retail if, well, uh, if it ever makes it to retail, sit at uh, the online retailers. So this is the Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader. This is the concept art, and it's interesting. Uh, it's not something that really I'm interested in, but maybe people out there are. I remember seeing the Darth Vader helmet and how strange it was in the concept art, so that's kind of something interesting to bring to life, but they're just looking, what can we do to reuse body parts? Maybe just do a new head and get away with it. So, And I'm sure it's like stupid expensive. I don't even know how much it is. What is it, like 60 bucks or something? And here's a Darth Maul that looks pretty cool. So they're going to be making this guy here. Uh, the Clone Wars Darth Maul. And yeah, I think he does look cool. I was wondering why does he not have those robotic legs. But I mean, that maybe that's just me wondering that. But yeah, they had to give him some sort of legs. So there it is. Here he is out of it. And well, I guess those are robotic legs. But they're not. They don't look like the show or the way I remember them in the show. But okay. I guess they are robotic legs. They just look like armor to me. Okay, so we've got the fifth brother Inquisitor, and we got a bunch of other uh, Inquisitor stuff going on here. So, looks pretty cool. If you watch the show Obi Wan, no, the Obi Wan show that just came out, there's two episodes, and pretty interesting so far. I'm curious the direction it's going to go, but a bit fun right there. And here he is out of the packaging, and that lightsaber. We're going to be talking about that lightsaber <laughs> here in a bit, but I got a lot to say. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm not sure if I'm going after this whole set of uh, Inquisitors, but uh, they do look interesting. Here we are with the Riot Scout Trooper. Um, my picture's a bit out of order, but I'm just going in the order that they are. So, Riot Scout Trooper, I don't remember this in Return of the Jedi, them whipping out a shield and stuff, but it's a gaming greats, and it's uh, so it's, it's not from Return of the Jedi. So, they had to give it some sort of accessory, just another reuse of the same mold, uh, another Hasbro trick. 
Now, I don't know what mold they're reusing with this here, but this is uh, the Grand Inquisitor from the Obi-Wan show, and it does look really good. This character was very interesting at first. Uh, well, he, he's still interesting right now, let me just say. But I think the figure looks pretty good, and here he is uh, outside of his packaging. It looks like a cloth cape, so I mean, it looks like they did a pretty good job, and it put a lot of work into it. So it's a nice-looking figure overall. Here are some pipeline reveals. Don't know a whole lot about the characters in the pipeline reveals. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I didn't play the game. But you know, I'm starting to wonder, like, when are we going to get a Darth Malgus? So uh, I was looking at this guy on the left thinking, is that like pre-Darth Malgus? Because I just don't really know. So we've got this, uh, what is it, second sister Inquisitor? Is that what it's called? But fifth brother and fourth sister. Fourth sister Inquisitor here. So uh, she's in the show and looks pretty interesting. Probably the least interesting of all these so far. So Hasbro did a, I guess a live stream or something. I didn't watch it, but I'm hearing about it. So there are three different versions of this Reba figure and they're tripling down on her in Black Series. So this is what she looks like in Black Series. And I think it really does match the show very well. And probably the best looking one is the Black Series. Then we got the Vintage Collection one, which also looks really good, but of course is almost half the size. And it, it's interesting. This is a concept I thought, I was like, we should do this like if you put a a black series figure out why not copy it with the vintage collection and so on or at least with specific characters and so we'll see how well this does with it in triplicate now you're also going to get it in retro collection so uh interesting that they're doing it like this or this is how they're doing it and that they've got this stuff all announced like right on the time when obi-wan's coming out so we've also got pictures of john favreau as paz vizsla and this is interesting character. It's more or less the heavy Mandalorian with a John Favreau head and an open box. So this is kind of a peek into the future of packaging to where they'll have an open box with a slip cover. So is that really how it's going to go? Is that the way they're going to do it? So who knows? Maybe this is just for an exclusive or something. But uh, I don't know if I like the future of that either. That's not a good solution to me. Also what we saw, and I can't find the picture of it anymore, but it was a leak about a face paint you're gonna get a digital face paint it's called the selfie star wars figure where you pick your you send a picture of your face i guess and then they make a head and put it on a figure for 60 bucks and so that's the thing now i have an idea how they can do the selfie thing i don't think they're gonna 3d print it i don't think they're gonna make you a new head i think they're gonna have a generic uh book of like 150 heads and they will see which one matches yours the most and then add paint to it to to be close to your face with a digital face printing. I think that's how it's going to work. I don't think they're actually going to make a new mold for every single purchase. Okay, so there's a new HasLab in town, and it is the Star Wars Black Series Reva, the third sister, Force Effects Elite lightsaber for $500, needing 5,000 backers. You have 44 days to go, 43 now that you're watching this. And I've got to say, I have no interest in this whatsoever. Now, here's the thing. I think that a lightsaber like this, um, a single-bladed one, should be about 140 max. Now they're trying to charge you 250 to 270 for those lightsabers. And then now they're saying, well, it's a value because you can get two sabers in one for 500. I'm not falling for that trick. But the thing is, is that $500 for this thing, it's just insane. It is, it's a redundancy because you're putting two in one and they should have been able to put this down to a $300 price point, $400 price point, but I'm just not in it. I have like a dozen lightsabers, a dozen of these lightsabers, but I'm not really going forward with the crazy prices they're asking now, and they're just a slight bit better than the older ones, so I'm not in on it. I think it's not the best idea for HasLab. Uh, they've lost their way with HasLab, but uh, evidently 649 people have backed this already, so I mean, good for them, kudos. Will it hit the 5,000? I don't know, but I won't be part of it. Not trying to be a downer or anything, it's just not for me. So anyway, what do you guys think about this week's weekly news and review? What else is going on out there that I missed? What is really cool? What are you interested in? What are you excited about? Like and subscribe. Comment below. Tadarium Hanger out.